Hello everyone, I'm back and ready to watch more Star Trek The Original Series Season 2 today. Also, the uniform is back today due to popular demand. I don't think I'll be wearing this too frequently in the summer due to the long sleeves. It's quite warm, especially with the lights and all the electronics in my room. It tends to become somewhat of an oven in here sometimes. I will suffer for you guys a little bit today though. We are going to be watching the third episode that was produced in season two, which is called Friday's Child. I can't wait to get into it, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. The Capellan's basic weapon, the Klegat, they can make it almost as effective against a man as a phaser. How long were you stationed on the planet, Doctor? Only a few months. They believe that only the strong should survive. Once they've got it into their heads, we're showing force you can forget them signing any mining treaty. Very well. Scotty, you're in command. Bear in mind that the Klingons have been sighted in this sector. Mention of the Klingons again already, huh? I'm Captain Kirk. We come with open hearts and hands. A Klingon! Grant, no! Why did he act out like that? Did he miss the debriefing about don't show any hostility? Well, that guy didn't last long. Well, I'm kind of wondering if I should have worn my red uniform today. We're in a very dangerous place. Our mission, obtain a mining agreement. Mining we've agreement. We've discovered a Klingon agent has preceded us to the planet. Is it your policy to kill Klingons on sight? Yeah, that, that guy was not acting under my orders. He's young and inexperienced. We understand only that he also offers things of value for our rocks. Let me call my ship. And inform Bring them on an attack upon their village. Earthmen fear to bargain honestly. Will you hand us your weapons? Gotta do it. They're unusually honest. Is that what I heard you say in the briefing room, Doctor? Yes, I mentioned that. Perhaps you'll explain to me why one of my men is dead. Because he was drawing a weapon on another of their guests. Yeah. So a Klingon made a purely instinctive, defensive move. And he made the wrong move. What's a Klingon doing down here among your scrupulously honest friends anyway? I know what it means to you to lose a crewman. Yeah, he's quite upset. Picking up something on the sensor, sir. Seems to be another ship. Klingon, I suspect. It's just at the edge of our sensor range, sir. You think it's a Klingon ship? You can't hurt us much out there bobbing about like that. No need to call a captain yet. Bones, I shouldn't have chewed you out. I'm sorry. I understand. <laughs> no hard feelings. Hello, tall beauty. You've uh, shown friendship by handing over our weapons. Jump. What? If you touch it, her nearest male relatives will have to try to kill you. They're offering you a chance for combat. They consider it more pleasurable than love. What? Shouldn't McCoy have debriefed them a little bit more thoroughly? Here, Captain. Before that coming down here? Finds you a disappointment. He wanted to fight? I am the Ti'ur Aka'ar. I lead the ten tribes of Capella. And this is Elian. A young wife give an old man a son to rule these tribes. First of all, I must protest the killing of one of my crewmen. Their customs are different, Tier. And different from those of my people, too, Tier. The sight of death frightens them. Let me take this, Jack. What the Klingon has said is unimportant, and we do not hear his words. I just call the Klingon a liar. Is it not best to have two who bargain for the same goods? It is I who speak for the tribe, Mob. What do Earthmen offer you? The Klingons believe as you do. Only the strong should live. And the highest of all our laws states that your world is yours and will always remain yours. This differs us from the Klingons. Hmm. There you go. Good. Let the Klingons and the Earthmen offer us amusement. The Earthmen have different customs, but never have they lied to our people. Yeah, those of us who will not bargain with Earthmen, Aka'ar. You will fight me, Mob. Does sound like a challenge. Let that be your choice, dear. I must consider the words I have heard. Very difficult to 
uh, try to bargain with somebody who has completely different customs and views uh, aside from your own. Mr. Scott, I'm getting a call from a vessel. I've lost it. It sounded like a distress signal from an Earth vessel. Well, things are getting complicated here. Is this a civil war? What is happening? <laughs> Kirk just knocked that big guy out. What is this guy doing? I have no quarrel with you, Captain. I wish merely to, to return to my vessel. We need the mineral, too. I was sent to negotiate. Release him. This guy was victorious? That's not good for us. He likes that Klingon. Akaar is dead. Ah. Uh... I am the tear. If you leave these people now, be certain you make the right decisions. Let me kill them for you. Or let the Klingon and me fight. It might amuse you. He does like his amusement. I begin to like you, Earthman. And I saw fear in the Klingon's eye. We had an agreement. That too may change Klingon. Well, Kirk knows how to play to this guy's desires, I guess. It is a distress call. It's from the SS Deidre. It's a Klingon vessel attacking. Oh. Captain, careful. What, if you help her, do you... You carry a child who would be Tyr. On that? I must die. No! <laughs> With all the aggression that Kirk has shown, I'm surprised that they're still alive. That these people haven't just killed them all. Maybe they're just amused by all this. No man may touch the wife of a tear. Well, she's she she's not anymore. To die, Earth man. I was proud to obey the laws. He laid hands upon me. It is my right to see him die. Oh, geez, this is the thanks I get for trying to save you, huh? We are under heavy attack by Klingon vessels. Two convoy ships are already damaged. Prepare to take us out of orbit, Mr. Sulu. Oh, can't get a hold of the captain, so Scotty's in charge here. Scotty, the captain. We have a distress call from a Federation ship under attack. That's where our duty lies. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's either that or beam down a search party for a captain. Our inability to reach the landing party is strange. And I am concerned. Captain, I'm going to fix that woman's arm. They can only kill me once for touching her. That's a very good idea, Bones. Yes, Captain. An excellent idea. Hmm? You will not touch me. There's just a lot of fighting going on in this episode. I think we can get you safely to the ship. Your choice. To live is always desirable. Let's go. Why is his throne in the middle of the dirt? <laughs> I have a right to my weapons. Your weapon will be returned when our business is completed. That was our agreement. No signal at all. Negative, sir. It should be on our screens by now. We managed to retrieve our communicators. Our phasers were not to be found. The girl, L.E.M., hates the unborn child she is carrying. What? I guess it's understandable that she wouldn't have any love for that. Their pairing was just to bear a child, I assume. Like an arranged thing. I'm a doctor, and it's my tradition to care for the sick and injured. Now let me see that arm. <laughs> I'm gonna heal you, and you're gonna like it. <laughs> Here they come. Damn, he just... You will not touch me in that manner. I'll touch you in any way or manner that my professional judgment indicates. Yeah, I have to side with her on this one. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What is happening? You can come any time now. How do you know? I'm a doctor. Because I'm a doctor, that's how I know. <laughs> Strange hand. Very soft. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
this episode is strange to me so far. <laughs> like, I understand the need to touch her belly, but maybe he should have, like, at least said, like, I'm going to touch your belly right now. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> you think we could create a sonic disruption with two of our communicators? We have a very slight chance it would work. Is it not working? Well, this is awkward. Oh, something's happening. Oh, gosh. Oh, geez. This is a very violent episode. Worried about the delivery? I don't have the equipment to handle in an emergency. Well, if you don't think you're going to handle it. Forget it. I can do it. <laughs> the last thing I want around is a ham-handed ship's captain. <laughs> Kirk knows how to motivate his crew, that's for sure. No. Only Mac boy. No. Look. I'm a doctor, not an escalator. Spock, give me a hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only your touch. Come on, Mr. Escalator. The vessel doesn't just disappear. Well, if it goes out of range. Oh, but they're chasing after it. There's so. nothing, Mr. Scott. All channels and frequencies are clear. Was it fake? Mr. Chekhov, pull the microtape on that distress call. I want it replayed. We must have help. Enterprise, acknowledge. Did you hear it? They called us by name. Not a general distress signal. Oh, is that unusual? How would a freighter know we were ordered into this sector? Trap. We would divert it from the planet. Or it could be an authentic distress call. We'll stay long enough to make certain. I thought maybe the the ship would have had a way to identify the Enterprise, but maybe not. No, no. It's there. The pain is there. Vegetation, Captain. Evidently, there's water nearby. Good. But we need weapons just as much as we need water, Spark. Follow me. You must want the <laughs> child. No. Here, child belongs to husband. But the husband's dead? Poppycock. Poppycock. Say to yourself, the child is mine, is mine. Yes, it's yours. No. <laughs> it's yours. Congratulations. No. Say to yourself, Your father. the child is mine. It is mine. <laughs> Uh oh. That's Fortunately, pretty this impressive. Bar has suitable tensile cohesion. You mean it makes a good bowstring? I believe I said that. Oh. Look at that cheesy smile. <laughs> McCoy genuinely loves helping people, healing people. He loves life. No, no, Mr. Spock, that isn't the way you place this arm under here to I support would its rather, head. I would rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not. McCoy, bring our child. <laughs> what? <laughs> our child? I'll explain later. That should prove very interesting. Indeed. <laughs> Still negative, Mr. Scott. All sweeps. We're turning back. What five, Helen? Time to go back. Mr. Scott, another distress call from the USS Carolina. Ignore it, Lieutenant. Log it is my order, my responsibility. Ooh, that might be a real one. If it should turn out to be real. There's an old, old saying on Earth, Mr. Sulu. Fool me once. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. What is she doing? What the hell is she doing? Did she hit McCoy? She did. My patient spattered me with rocks. She's gone. The child? It's all right. It's in there. She just left it. I really thought she'd learn to want it. She'll head straight to the warriors. I'll go with you. Bones, you took a medical oath long before you signed aboard my ship. That small patient in there needs you. Poor guy. Estimating the planet? 31 minutes, sir. Well, they went far, huh? Picking up a vessel ahead. A Klingon warship, directly in our path. Mr. Sulu, sound battle stations. Aye, aye, sir. Man. I like this kind of setup for the episode with 
uh, Kirk, McCoy, and Spock on the planet, and then Scotty in charge with Sulu, Chekhov, Uhura, figuring out their own kind of thing. I like it. A lot of people have a chance to have an important role in the in the episode. I have it on the view screen now, sir. Laser banks are ready, sir. And we'll go right down their throat if necessary. Let's see if they have the belly for it. Oh man, a challenge. Did that guy just fall over? <laughs> He doesn't look like he's doing too well. Wonder where the lady went. She didn't catch up to them. The Earthmen make excellent game. Their cleverness has surprised me. There she is. The child is dead, Ma'ab. Do as you will with me. The Earthmen? Dead. Oh. I killed them as they slept. She wants to save them and then the child. If true. Take us to them. Do you doubt my word, Klingon? She is the wife of a tear. First, we'll verify her story. Is this what your sworn word means, Klingon? Oh, here we go. Well, now that now they know that you're still alive. He's got our phasers. Spock. Here, Captain. DM. Klingon? One of us must get him. Revenge, Captain? Why not? You and your primitive knives and your weapons. I'll teach you what killing really means. Fight! Are you warriors or children? I will flee. When the Klingon turns to fire, I'll... As Tear of the Ten Tribes, I give you back your life. Mine is now forfeit. Klingon! <laughs> I am very confused. Hey! Hold it there. The cavalry! Drop your weapons. What happened to the Klingon vessel? Did they just plow through it? We missed you, Mr. Scott. Well, sir, we had a wee bit of a run-in with a Klingon vessel, but he had no stomach for fighting. I could... No, that's not the way to handle it. There. Arm in a... That's it. See how easy? Oochie woochie coochie coo. Oochie woochie coochie coo. <laughs> Really? <laughs> My thoughts exactly. If you're curious, consult linguistics. Consult linguistics. Contact Starfleet. Inform them that Federation mining rights on Capella have been secured by treaty. Representing the high tier, Leonard James Akar. The child was named Leonard James Akar. <laughs> yes, I think it's a name destined to go down in galactic history, Leonard. What do you think, Spock? I think you're both going to be insufferably pleased with yourselves for at least a month. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Take us out of orbit, Mr. Sulu. Ahead, warp back to one. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I was very lost and confused. I really didn't understand the Capellans at all. I know they they said like basically what their whole deal is. Survival of the fittest. They have a lot of strange customs. Lots of fighting. Lots of death. I mean, I guess I was just a little bit also wondering why like Kirk just went so aggressive and murderous because a lot of times in the past he's been all about like peace and preserving life and here it was just a lot of a lot of violence a lot of fighting fashioning traps and weapons and I mean I guess if I think about it enough if I rewatch it, it'll probably make more sense also there was the Klingon in the mix there was just a lot going on that I had difficulty keeping straight. I guess the main thing that I was confused about as the credits were rolling was why did they sign the treaty with the Federation after everything that Kirk and everybody there did? Breaking their rules, killing their people, 
I understand why they would choose the Federation over the Klingons, but why choose anybody at all to have the treaty with? If this is how both, like, the Klingon lied, the Klingon was just not honorable. He was just trying to manipulate, and I think the Capellans caught on to that. I'm also confused a little bit as to why the guy who took over as Tear, or however you say it, why he just had the change of heart and says, my life is forfeit, and just went and pretty much martyred himself like that. Why? According to her, the child was dead. But that could have been a lie because she also said that she killed Kirk and everybody, but it was shown that she didn't. So she, they knew that she lied about killing them. And lying is very bad in their society. So why after that did he say, you can live and my life is forfeit? Did he break one of the customs? Did he show some sort of weakness? Some kind of self-perceived weakness? I, I need help on this one, guys. I need help. I don't dislike the episode, but I'm just confused. I'm a little bit confused. I feel like I'm even more confused than I was from Mud's Women, and that one confused me a lot too. Anyways, I have to give this episode some very high marks though for the just focus on Bones and all the funny lines that we had with him and seeing him try his hardest to help somebody out of the kindness of his heart that did not want his help at all. His compassion, his kindness got through to her, his gentleness, and kind of swayed her over to a new way of thinking, maybe, to a new way of thinking about the child and wanting the child and being happy with the child and closing comments Gucci 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 Goo and of course you know Scotty taking over captain's position always a good time very interesting episode what did you guys get out of that how did you guys understand the things that transpired I really need your help with that and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye bye